Ting Feng, I appreciate you taking the time to speak with you today. I really enjoyed the demos and presentations from your team. You made some really interesting comments about machine learning and how it can be applied in the 5G air interface for continuous network performance improvements. Can you maybe elaborate on that a little bit and tell us how that's going to inform the way operators in the future plan, deploy, and manage their networks? Yeah, this is actually one of the uh, points I really want to stress. Um, machine learning has been actually uh, exploited in all areas, including in communications. The protocol is sort of uh, the interface between the network and the device. Every single bit that's sent over the air is well defined with a meaning. Uh, we have a deterministic way of uh, you know, interpreting uh, every single bit. Um, the idea that I'm trying to bring up is to say that uh, this type of air interface is uh, updated once every 18 months on average. And you only have the next feature or next level performance um, every 18 months, right? Is it possible to make the air interface more dynamic so that um, uh, as the um, neural network technology evolves, the air interface itself evolves? It's not just implementation difference, but uh, take extreme example, I can say, you know, 4G has LTE and has a, a turbo code. 5G has LDPC code. Is it possible to define a code that's actually uh, defined by a neural network encoder and neural network decoder? And as long as you have a pair of network that understands each other, you don't have to fix it. And because we know neural network uh, evolves very fast, right? Uh, every couple months, you see some new breakthroughs, some new uh, improvement. So if you can leave the air interface more dynamic, less defined, potentially uh, the 5G or 6G um, network performance can just evolve naturally with the neural network technology without updating the air interface every 18 months. So when we think about improvements uh, to network performance, another thing you touched on today was subband half duplex. So maybe you can give us a, a bit of an overview of where you are with that and tell us a little bit about how you're working towards full duplex. Yeah, sub and half duplex is actually, uh, we call it halfway solution, um, but it's also a software solution to get to the full duplex. So one particular um, variation for duplex is called sub and full duplex. That's where we actually say that in, in macro cell, you have very high transmit power. It's very hard to do actually uh, TX or RX interference cancellation on top of each other you would need 140 dB or something like that, right? So instead of um, having that, we're thinking that can we separate them in a TDD band and pair spectrum, you just put downlink and uplink, TX and RX right next to each other. And uh, then the inference level actually reduced by 45 to 50 dB. Actually, a halfway solution to do that is say, I'm still partitioning the channel um, in terms of uplink and downlink subband, but I'm running the GNOB, running the network uh, in half duplex fashion. So the channelization looks the same, but GNOB is only it'll still operate like TDD, either down or up. The benefit of this is actually because channel is separated, now you don't see other cell inference anymore. Right, and then I also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, precise positioning in the wide area 5G network. This is something you and your colleagues discussed today, but maybe just give us a high level overview of uh, where your work is focused today and why it's important. A positioning can, for example, benefit in autonomous driving and uh, you can have smart agriculture, and you can also have these robo robots, right, robotics, that uh, uh, can benefit from high precision uh, positioning. The problem is uh, for GSS or GPS type of uh, services, um, the performance is best if you have open sky, which means you see no blocker. You don't see buildings surrounding you, and uh, um, as soon as you go to the city, uh, when you have high buildings, then the positioning accuracy reduces a bit. So what's interesting is in the area where you have these dense deployments, you have scatters. Um, also is where 5G will be deployed in large volume and uh, in, in a dense fashion. So the idea is if you can enable uh, positioning signal to be transmitted from 5G base stations, essentially you have a new constellation, like satellite have different constellation, right? You, you have GPS, you have Galileo, you have a Beidou. Now Verizon can have a Verizon constellation, and they can deploy it anywhere they want on that spectrum. Also, 
5G cells are typically larger bandwidth, like 100 megahertz. That gave you much better resolution compared to 1 megahertz or 10 megahertz GPS signals. Really exciting stuff, and I'd encourage everybody to check out the demos and presentations. And Ting Fang, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me today.